DAU's AI video learning series. Today I would like to make an AI tank detector. Okay, it's an artificial intelligent model to detect tanks. And we're going to build our own machine learning model in 10 minutes. So we're going to keep this video kind of short. Uh, it does build on, or you'll get a lot more out of it anyway, if you watch uh, parts one and two of how an AI learns to see a, con a convolutional neural net work videos. Uh, however, uh, this will stand on its own and we're just going to actually uh, do the practical part of it today and, and actually make the model. So why am I doing this? Why are we why are we going through this making a model? Who in the world, why do, why do you acquisition folks need to know how to do this? Well, just a couple days ago I heard a senior leader in DOD uh, making a brief and, and in one of part of his speech he, he was talking about how difficult it is to make artificial intelligent models and how much time it takes and how much compute power and how much um, data it takes. And, and all that's true. I'll, I'll give you that. But it's getting so much easier so quickly. I mean, it, but how hard it was two years ago, it's inf it's so much easier today than it was two years ago and and incredibly easier than it was 10 years ago. And, it, and it's getting better every day. And all of these tools, or a lot of these tools, are open source and publicly available. And with just a little bit of code experience, you can you can figure this out. So you might not be a coder. That's okay. You're still going to get a lot out of this because you know whether you're a logistician or a flight tester or a tester or a, a contracting officer or a systems engineer. You still need to know as much as you can comprehend about artificial intelligence to, to keep up. And you're, you're going to write better contracts. You're going to make better test plans. You're going to um, make better uh, support procedures. The more you can know, the more you can speak the language, the better off we're going to be and the better systems we're going to build for our warfighter. And, and quite frankly, our warfighter, you know, AI, the, the weapon system is going to be the IT. It's going to be the infrastructure, the enterprise uh, infrastructure that we're all using is going to be the weapon system. The data that we use is going to be the weapon system. So it's going to be a little fuzzy to say who that warfighter is. And that warfighter could be very much just as much be you and me as, as it is the, you know, the steely eyed fighter pilot. So that's really what I wanted to do is to show you the practical aspects of how to make a machine learning model. And how AI learns to see videos, parts one and two, we, we showed this little clip and we talked about convolutional neural networks, CNNs, were responsible for the segmenting and the identification of these labels that you see in this picture. And we also talked about for AIs to learn to see or to see anything or for machine learning in that matter to do anything with any data, it has to be in numbers. I mean, computers see numbers, so all this has to be converted to numbers. So thanks to Jeremy Howard, who I'll tell you about here in a moment, I found this wonderful little website here called pixspy.com, P-I-X-S-P-Y.com. And if you go to this, this website and you drag a photo in, I'm going to drag a picture of a tank, um, drag a photo into here, and then it brings it up and it'll show you, it'll put a cursor on it, it'll show you if you move your cursor around on the left over the hover, it'll show you the red green and the blue values of each one of those little sets of pixels. You know, for every location here, there's three sets of pixels, red, green, and blue. And you can see the values here. So if I put it over a very blue area, you can see the uh, the blue at the very end is the highest number. If I find some red on this photo right up here, red, um, there you go, there's a red. You can see the first one, the R, is 183, much higher than the others. If I see if I can find some green, is there any green? There's a little bit of green right there. If I find that green, you can see the green one in the middle is the highest number. If I find a dark area, it should be all blacks or almost zeros. If I could find a completely black, it'd be zero, zero, zero. If I could find a completely saturated place on the photo, it would be 256, 256, 256, because that would be all. all right. And if I wanted to find out uh, exactly what one pixel was, I could click right on it. I'll click back on that red, and it'll show me the click. So it's a pretty handy little website. And then we saw from this graphic that wiring neural networks directly to the pixels in an image was just not tenable. Here we've got a 256 by 256 array of pixels and wiring just one layer of the red, green, or blue uh, directly to a, to a neural network uh, layer of 128 by 128 neurons was going to be well over a, well, over a billion parameters. And then all three of those would have been 
uh, 3 billion parameters and that was just not tenable. It was just too much. And we said they tried it like this and it just didn't work. So we talked about engineers turn to the human eye to kind of mimic nature again, like we did with neural networks, but we went to a different part of the brain. We went to the optical part. We know that when the eye sees only a very small part on the back of the retina, about the size of a pencil eraser, sees fine vision, but your brain stitches that little patch of fine vision together. So if, to you, it looks like there's there's fine vision across the entire view. So instead of uh, wiring the, all the pixels up directly to the neurons, uh, what we did instead is we'd slide the small kernel over the entire photo and make another smaller map or another map called the feature map. And I borrowed this slide from Jan LeCun. Uh, on the left bottom, the, the squares at the bottom over there, those are the outputs from individual filters in early stages of a convolutional neural network. And then you see the mid-level features from filters in the mid-level, and then the, uh, the high-level features from filters toward the end uh, before you get to the fully connected layers. And then the last thing I kind of want to review is this presidential identifying convolutional neural network that we made. That was a three-layer uh, convolutional neural network. It had 32 filters in the first layer and 64 filters in the second, 128 in the third, and then it flattened it out and went to a fully connected layer that's called the head, and then went to a softmax layer to put out a probability that the photo coming in was the actual president, what president it was. All right, so that burned up about six minutes of our 10 minutes. So uh, we're going to build a whole machine learning model. So how are we doing so far? So uh, that's okay because it, it, I literally built this before the coffee got made uh, this, uh, the other morning as I was waiting for my coffee to actually get made. And the way this all came about is I came across this, this course from Jeremy Howard called uh, uh, Practical Deep Learning for Coders. You see it here. Uh, course.fast.ai if you'd like to try it. Now, the four coders. So if you don't have any coding experience, uh, maybe just watch my videos because what I get out of it that's, you know, not deep with code, I'll pass along to you guys. But but if you've got any coding experience, I haven't seriously coded in over 10 years and uh, so far not bad at all. He walks you right through it. Uh, but really, really good stuff and really practical. I like the practical part because he he, he emphasizes that. Okay, so the course is hosted on a website called kegel.com and it uses Jupyter Notebooks. And what you see here is a Jupyter Notebook. And these, uh, so far everything has been completely free to me. I needed a Gmail account to register for this. Uh, uh, well, I, I didn't need a Gmail account. There's multiple ways you could do it, but I used my Google account to go ahead and register for it. I did have to give it a little bit of personal information. Uh, and they had to verify it with a phone number, but it was pretty quick and very, pre pretty quick and easy. And this gives you access to the Kaggle uh, uh, site, as well as the Jupyter Notebooks and all the documentation there, um, including uh, access to a GPU. And I've played around on this quite a bit beyond just making this model. And so far, it hasn't cost me anything for three minutes of GPU time. I think they'll give you a, a free amount and then they'll, they'll start charging you a small amount if you go beyond that. Um, but, but Jeremy in his very first lesson, Jeremy Howard, he, uh, his lesson one was uh, how to identify a bird. And uh, he you know, took a photos of birds and loaded them in then photos of forests because he needed pictures that weren't birds so he could tell the difference and see what the probability of one was versus the other. And uh, he did that in a demo and did it in about 10 minutes. And uh, for your first uh, project, you're supposed to build your own uh, machine learning model. And what I did, I just wanted to make it somewhat applicable to DOD. So I said, well, uh, let's see if we can identify a military tank. And uh, changed his notebook, copied his notebook, and changed his notebook. And that was um, it was pretty straightforward. There's some motherhood here. I won't go through all that. This talks about your how you get your, your GPU and your phone and verifying all that. Um, but anyway, we use DuckDuckGo. So the, the, the notebook itself actually reaches out uh, in, in a code, win in, in a little window. You have text windows, and then you have code windows. And you can just run these two together. So you can put the text in here, and then you can put the code, and then you can run the code. You can either click on it on, on the side and execute it uh, as you go, or you can uh, batch it out to the GPU and do the whole thing at once. But 
But this is the text part here, and you can see we use DuckDuckGo to search for military tank pictures, and then use DuckDuckGo to search for pictures of cars. Now, cars was giving me a lot of photos that were weird, that didn't really, weren't just cars. So I changed it to sedans, and that seemed to work a lot better than, than just cars. I was getting a cars cartoon and all kinds of business. And tanks, I had to change it to military tanks because I was getting water tanks and tank tops and all kinds of stuff like that. You know, they say 80% of your time effort with any of these machine learning things is going to be with the data. And that is actually all that took the time. The machine learning part was easy, but to get DuckDuckGo to give me some good, clean files of tanks and some good clean files of sedans took a, a good a good little minute not a lot of time but a little bit most of the time okay then we fine-tuned a pre-trained neural network model we're going to use ResNet 18 which means 18 convolutional layers we just showed you the presidential model with three convolutional layers ResNet 18 has 18 there's a group of of these ResNet models um, uh, and, and these are pre-trained models and they're free for anybody to use. And if you start with one of these models with all those feature maps already, um, you know, having meaningful shapes and features in them, then it's much easier to just fine tune uh, with the data you need than it is to train the whole model. And that's what we're going to do here. We're going to fine tune that uh, ResNet 18 model. And then we uh, tried running on the pictures and saw what the probability was. So, so first off, we download the image of the tanks and then the, the cars. And so it's uh, basically we just uh, go ahead and you know search image images of military tanks. And I just grabbed one in the beginning. That's kind of he, how he did a bird. So I copied him, and then took a look at that uh, that one tank to see how it, how it looked and it looked like a legitimate tank. And then basically downloaded a picture of a sedan. Uh, and look like a sedan, so that all looked good. So then went ahead and uh, went to search for military tanks and sedans and pull in about, two, I think, 200 pictures of each of these. And, uh, and also I kind of copied what he did. He, he looked for some that had sun in the, in the photo and, and shade in the photo and then just regular photos and then just kind of randomly um, make your, your training batch look like that. Okay, and then crop those, resize those so they're all the same size. And, uh, and then we go ahead and train our model with it. So we do do that with, uh, well, first off, we, we look at the data and we see if there's any images that didn't come in clean. And in this case, 19 of the photos that downloaded from DuckDuckGo weren't really good photos. So we pulled those out so we didn't mess the model up. Then we use the data block to pull them from this, you know, basically we had a file of URLs. So a file of links to JPEG pictures out on the internet. So we use this data block feature, which is written in, in uh, PyTorch. Uh, well, it's fast AI, but fast AI uses PyTorch, uh, which uses Python, uh, but it's all very high level. And, you know, this one call to these, uh, to these searches um, uh, goes ahead and kind of sets this thing up and it pulls apart uh, randomly, it pulls off 20% of the data for validation. So it only trains with 80% of the data we have, and then it goes back and uses that other 20% uh, that it wasn't trained with to see if it correctly identifies it so it can give you an idea. Uh, squishes the photos all so they're all the same size. And then uh, before we got rolling, you know, as we pulled in that data block, we wanted to take a look at them. So I looked at a batch of eight of them and eight out of the, the 400 that, that there were. Uh, so tanks, sedans, tanks, sedans, and they all look pretty, 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 uh, looks like I got the same photo almost twice. Oh well, didn't seem to matter. There was, there was just two samples out of the whole thing. So I um, uh, went ahead and did that. And then the next block of data uh, is, this is really the whole command to train the network right here. So learn, uh, Equal, you know, we tell it what network we want to use, what model we want to use. We want to start with ResNet 18, and we want to um, uh, basically uh, do that and come back with an error rate. And we want to use a fine tune on that. So it goes ahead and did that. Came back, took eight seconds, two seconds, two seconds. So within, you know, less than 20 seconds, uh, it basically fine tuned this model to look for tanks. And um, you know, it, it, it came back here and uh, so it, it, the probability of the first picture, so I just threw the first picture in there, the probability that that first picture was a tank and it spit that out. And here's how actually what it did. Uh, probability was 100%. So that very first picture we saw up here um, was the one we just checked it on. We could check it on any of them. This one right here, and it said the probability of that was 100%. So, so 
kind of easy. You know, there's not a lot of code there. This is kind of long, but most of it's words explaining what's going on. Uh, you know, there's the, the duck, duck, go call. There's the look for the images, the bad images. There's the data block to get the data down. Um, and then there's the learn feature. And then the, uh, the split, uh, uh, the, the, the test part is automatically built in with the splitter. You know, you split it off to validate your data and then just tell it to learn. And it comes back and it'll show you the different epochs and what the error rates and the training loss function were. So it started, um, 0 0.68, then 0 0.08, 0.5, uh, 0.59, 0 0.050, and got to acceptable level and stopped uh, after two epochs of training uh, with an acceptable level of error, and then uh, again gave 100%. So that's pretty much all there was to it. Um, this is up there. If you want to go ahead and go through the trouble to get it, even if you're not a coder, you know, you can easily, you know, change bird to tank or change forest to traffic or whatever. And, you know, see tanks with traffic background or desert, you know, see tanks and desert background or whatever you'd like to, you know, airplane or whatever you want to try. It's pretty simple. Only takes a couple minutes to run and gives you a good idea. The reason I wanted to do this is just show you what was almost impossible five to 10 years ago is now almost trivial to do. And pretty much anybody could do it for free on the internet. So um, as you're writing your contracts and they're charging you $600,000 for something like this, you know, make sure you know uh, really what you're paying for before you go out and do this because you might be able to do this at night uh, in your in your free time kind of like I am All right, so went a little bit long there, but there was some gold in there. Hopefully you appreciated it uh, So thanks a bunch for watching. Please check out the other videos in this series and and please don't be shy put in the comments uh, anything you'd, you know, any constructive feedback. I, I would love that and um also, anything else you'd like to see, we'd, we'd like to, to hear about that. So if you'd like to take any of DAU's AI courses and earn credit toward an official AI training credential, please click here. And then uh, if that doesn't work, uh, there's also a link in the comments that you can click. It'll take you to our virtual campus and you can register for, for any of these courses very quickly and painlessly. And uh, please, again, like and subscribe. Thank you very much.